Our first question is from Jay Anderson with Kate Cypress. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get you to talk a little about this matchup. When you hear how excited the fans are for this particular pairing, I mean, is that a little bit more extra motivation for yourself? Yeah, those are the kind of fights that I want to be part of. I want to be involved in fights that fans are excited about and uh, on their feet cheering as the fights go on. Um, and these are the kind of fighters that I want to fight, guys who, who bring those action-packed fights. And I don't want to take anything away from uh, Dan in this because he is a dangerous opponent. But was that the first name you were looking for in this return? Was there talk of the Connor and Nate fights ever actually happening or anyone else on the radar? No, I think the UFC wanted to book me and Dan after his win. And uh, we were supposed to do it in San Diego. And obviously the pandemic hit. And uh, here we are doing it at the Apex in Vegas. So I'm just excited that it's happening. He's certainly a tough fighter, and he won a lot of fans all the way back to the Barboza fight, and he hasn't lost since. In your estimation, what makes Dan Hooker so dangerous as an opponent? You know, he's a very rangy, long, and, and patient fighter, and that's what makes him dangerous. Fair enough. And uh, last one for me. Um, you're known for charitable work outside the cage. And this weekend, uh, I've seen that you're picking up the tab for some people watching the fights back home, helping out some local businesses. And I'm wondering if you could just talk about how that came about. Yeah. Um, we were thinking about putting something together this last minute. We didn't have a whole lot of time to prep with the foundation and, and meet with the board of the foundation and get things moving. But uh, we had some other stuff after this fight. You know, I'm going to auction off my fight kit and – the money we make from it's going to go to this cause with with the uh, local business in Lafayette, but also we're putting together a back to school drive and uh, a Unity 5K, and we have a bunch of other stuff in the pipeline. But for this particular fight night, from five to close at a local restaurant, locally owned restaurant, we're going to be picking up the tab um, for everybody's food there, and you know just to give back to the to the to the local business and give back to the people of Lafayette, Louisiana. Let them have a free meal. Let them come together and, and, you know, talk over something common, talk over fighting a fighter from that area. It's just good to, to bring people together and, and to boost the business. Well, congratulations. It's a great idea. Very commendable. And I uh, wish you all the best this weekend. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Our next question is from Julian with Independent Media. Julian, your line has been unmuted. Dustin, how are you, brother? Yep. Um, my colleague just asked basically the questions I wanted before this, but I just wanted to know from you also, um, Dan, it's obviously the up and coming chasing that title now. Also, do you feel there's a pressure of, on yourself to get to get past this one and get back in the title contention? Or do you just feel like you said before, this is also an exciting matchup for yourself personally? Um, I just need to perform and win. You know, winning solves everything in this sport. I need to get in there, get my hand raised, and then we'll reassess the situation of the lightweight division and where everything's at and what could possibly be next. But right now I'm just focused on performing on Saturday night. And then just um, on, based on, on, on city kickboxing and New Zealand, um, how excited are you as an MMA fighter um, in terms of the way MMA has grown also in New Zealand and guys like Dan and Izzy them are coming up and making such a big impact like yourself also on the UFC platform? It's great. It's great to see the sport grow. It's great to see the sport evolve. And uh, they do have a very solid team there at City Kickboxing, two world champions, um, contenders. So they're doing the right stuff. You know, they, they seems like they got the right coaches and uh, a nice facility. Thank you so much for your time, Dustin. God bless. Thank you. Next question is from Danny Segura with MMA Jump. Hey Dustin, um, you've talked about how this has been the longest layoff of your career. Uh, wonder now that the fight's just a, a couple days away. Um, how was that experience with that layoff? And uh, was it nice to get some sort of time off from from competition? Yeah, it was nice to. It was forced, you know. Of course, if it was up to me, I would have been in the gym and fighting way before this. But it was a forced time off. And sitting on the sideline, I got to reassess everything. Got to just enjoy life, spend time with my family and put things into perspective. And it's been a long layoff, but coming back, fighting in these times, it's uh, nothing's the same right now. So it's even weirder coming back and being quarantined in, in, a, in the hotel. And it's just different times, man, but, it, but it's exciting. Thank you. 
Yeah, and, and part of that layoff, obviously, you, you just said it was forced. Um, it was that uh, that hip surgery that you had. And it was sort of a nagging injury that that you've uh, that you've dealt with. Um, how how are you? How do you feel? And how's life post surgery? Um, did it address the the issues that you had? You know, sometimes I feel a little discomfort or a little tightness, but I'm in a lot less pain uh, from day to day than I was. And I think I have a little bit more range of motion. You know, I feel good. My body feels good. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you still want to fight for the title. You want to get back to challenging for the belt. Um, what's the path like? Yeah, obviously, you get a vict big victory over Dan Hooker. But um, how, how much work do you think you need to put in after that to get back to the belt? I honestly think with the win over Dan Hooker, I'll be one fight away from another title shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know this is not regarding your fight, but it was still news. Uh, Colby Co Covington left ATT, and I know you guys had a little bit of a rocky relationship. Uh, just your thoughts on him leaving the gym, and I guess where do you stand with him uh, at this point in time? Because I know you guys squashed the beef and, and uh, you know, some time ago. I don't know uh, what's going on with him or where he's switching gyms or whatnot, but good luck. Thank you, man. Good luck on Saturday. Our next question is from Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Hey, Dustin. Uh, when we talked after the hip surgery, you told me that, you know, you, you believed that, you know, you, you realized at that moment how much you loved fighting, how much you missed fighting. Not that you ever lost passion for it, but now that you're back in a fight week, you know, you're a couple days away from the fight. Like, how is that feeling? Like, do you feel kind of energized and that kind of passion growing? Yeah, it's exciting, man. It's, uh, you know, it, it's a rush and, and, there's a feeling you only get from going through this process of fight week and cutting the weight and seeing your opponent and showing up on fight night. You know, this is, is a rush and I, and I love, I love it. Um, so I'm just happy to be here. Dan is obviously on a good win streak right now. I'll ask you, especially with his last couple of fights, you know, in the top 10 with guys like Ally Quinta and Paul Felder, have you been impressed by what you've seen out of him? Yeah, he's putting together some good performances. You know, he's beating some tough, some tough, gritty guys. You, uh, you have kind of a, <laughs> a notorious reputation for fighting some of the toughest guys in the division. Guys that just don't go away. Guys like Eddie Alvarez and Justin Gaethje, and and I think you could kind of put Dan Hooker on that list when you even when you think about his loss to Edson Barbosa. You know, he didn't really go away. He just refused to go away, and they kind of had to stop it at that point. Uh, what is it about you as a tough guy? Like, do you enjoy those kind of gritty matchups where you have to, you know, you, you know chances are you're probably going to have to go deep into the fourth or fifth round to put a guy like this away? Yeah, you know, that's just part of fighting. Uh, that's what I expect when I sign the contract. When I, when I get into the octagon and stand across from that man, I expect adversity to present itself. And, and it does. And I just know I can suffer and, and push through more than most of these guys. And I believe in my technique. And, uh, you know, that, that's fighting. It's not, I don't try to line myself up with these kind of crazy matchups and stuff. That's just fighting. Teddy Atlas, uh, said that a fight isn't a fight until there's something to overcome. So, you know, I, I've definitely been in some fights. <laughs> and speaking of Justin Gaethje, you know, obviously there was never, anything, never bad blood between you two or anything. It was just a great fight, but I'm sure you saw, uh, you know, when Dan said that, you know, he believes he can knock you out and, and Justin put on Twitter and said that this dude's getting murked and he's kind of backed you up going into this fight. What do you what do you have to say about a guy like Justin, who's an opponent, you know, a guy, I'm sure he would love to get a rematch with you to avenge a loss. Uh, but he has so much respect for you and so much admiration that you know, he's kind of you know, he's talked a lot about you, you know, coming into this fight. Yeah, cool. That's cool to see, you know, but he probably just has confidence in my abilities because um of my performance against him, you know, he, he obviously believes in himself a lot and he's a, a great fighter and, you know, I outfought him. So looking at it that way, I can see why he's rooting for me. And last question, uh, going to the title fight with Habib and, and Justin, kind of a two-part question, like, in your opinion, like, do you give Justin a good chance to beat Habib? And, and in a way, do you root for Justin? Because obviously that's an easy path back to the title for you because if you beat Dan, and he wins. I mean, obviously, you have a win over Justin. Hey, man, let let the best fighter win. Whoever performs the best that night, whoever prepared the best that best night, get their hand raised. Whoever it is, you know, I, I, it's let the better fighter win. That's all I got to say. I'm not really rooting for anybody in that fight, but I do think that if Gaethje can keep the fight in the middle of the octagon, that he can give Khabib some trouble, man. I, I think it's going to be hard to get him down in the open space. Definitely hard to hold him in, in the open space. 
but will Justin be able to keep his back off the fence and land those shots and make Khabib work for takedowns in the open? That's that's the big question. Thank you, Dustin. Thanks, man. Our next question is from Stephen Morocco. Stephen, your line has been unmuted. I apologize. I did not put my hand down again. Sorry. No worries. We'll jump to Alistair Bishop. Alistair, your line has been unmuted. Justin, how are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thank you. My first question, Dustin, um, looking back at Abu Dhabi, obviously post-fight you were, you were quite emotional, um, obviously a bit of mental strain in that loss. What have you put into place or, or what sort of mental progress have you had to make to, to get back to a fighting style? Just had to, you know, take care of some, some injuries and rest my body and mind and, and get back to the drawing board and put in another training camp and here, here we are. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to ask you, obviously Dan Hooker's the guy who's on the rise. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure title contention is still in your mind. So if, if you can get past Dan Hooker, where, where do you see yourself in the division? I believe I'm one fight away from a title shot with a win over Dan Hooker. And welterweight, is, is that something that's on your mind at all? Yeah, I do think I will eventually be fighting in the, in the welterweight division. And do you have any names in mind there that you'd like to start with in that division? Uh, only name in my mind is, is Dan Hooker. Fantastic. Uh, just moving off the fight stuff, something, something I picked up during the quarantine, which I find quite funny, was your wife saying she was going to end up pregnant if the quarantine lasted much longer. So did you, did you escape uh, pregnancy-free or are you expecting another little kid along the way? I think I'm good, but we'll see. I think I'm all right. <laughs> Awesome, man. Thank you. Best of luck for Saturday. <laughs> All right. Our next question is from Augusto Hermani is gay with Samos MMA. Hi, Dustin. How are you? All right. How you doing? Fine. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to know which aspects do you consider are going to be the key for winning on Saturday? You know, Dan's a very patient fighter and I need to, to be patient as well. I need to not be over aggressive or, or push something that's for something that's not there. I need to be patient and let my skills do the work. And and how do you feel about uh, fighting in an in an empty arena? I like it. I like the idea of it. I think it's going to be quiet. I'll be able to hear my team. The focus will be different. It's just uh, a new a new wrinkle in, in the fighting. I've never done it before, so we'll find out on Saturday. And Dustin, I want to know how did the, the COVID-19 situation affect you, uh, not only in your training camp, but also you have been helping hospitals during this pandemic with, with your foundation. So, so how was that, that experience? It was uh, great to be in a position to give back to the, to the medical staff and the frontline medical workers uh, in my hometown of Lafayette, Louisiana. I'm appreciative of that, that we have the uh, resources and the people in place to be able to make that happen. But other than that, you know, I've, I was just like everyone else, quarantined at home with my family, stuck in the house. And, and what about the training camp? Did, did it affect you in any way? Not at all. I, I thought it would, but I went out to American Top Team in South Florida, and they have so many high-level fighters that even if the groups were small, it was so much knowledge being passed around, and the coaches were always there every session to, to push us and, and, you know, coach us in the right direction and help us get better. So everything was normal. It felt like a, a normal training camp to me. Okay, Dustin, thank you very much and good luck on Saturday. Thank you, man. Our next question is from Christopher Reed with New Zealand Herald. One question from me. Obviously, this is a short notice fight in a smaller octagon. Has this changed sort of building a strategy um, against a dangerous guy like Dan? No, uh, it hasn't. And it, and it honestly wasn't really that short notice. I, I had a, almost a full training camp. Sweet. Thanks, man. Yep.